The Canon R5 is an absolutely stunning piece of equipment. I looked forward to it from the day it was announced to the day I got it in the mail. And it's one of the few pieces of gear that I was so excited about that didn't kind of have a letdown, you know? A lot of times you get excited about something and then you get it and maybe you're even excited when you first get it, but then it just kind of falls off a little bit. And you know, maybe it didn't perform the way that you want. Maybe it didn't bring what you were expecting. That's not the case with the Canon R5. The Canon R5 is a absolutely perfect camera for anyone who does a lot of video and photo. And I think that's really what it specializes in and that's why I got so excited about it was the fact that it performed so well doing video and photo. After using the Canon R5 for quite a while now, I wanna go ahead and show you my tips and tricks when it comes to setting up the Canon R5. But if you don't have the R5, most of these tips and tricks apply to most Canon mirrorless or DSLR systems. It's basically tips and tricks within their menu system to help make sure you get the best photo and video possible. Tip number one will simplify your file handling a lot, especially if you're doing a lot of video work with multiple cameras. That way when you bring them all into the same project, you can easily see which clips come from which camera. Okay, so to change the file naming system up so you can easily identify which file came from which camera, we're gonna use this dial right here to go over to the yellow menu right there with the wrench and right on, let's see, we're gonna go to screen one using the dial on the front. And now we're gonna go to the file name. And you can see my file name is MWR5 and that's for Mike Willie R5. And so what that tells me when I see this in the filing system later on the computer, I know those are my Canon R5 files. I think most of you are used to seeing like something like this 3Q4A. And so your files will start with that and then have a number beside them. However, when you change this and you click the file name and you can see you can go back and forth here. Uh, and in order to do that, you go to a change user setting one and you type in what you want it to say. Now it has to be four characters, any more than four characters and you're not going to be able to do it. So you got to find something that's four characters that will make sure you know exactly where that file came from. Don't underestimate how valuable it is to have the, the camera's name on the file name when you bring it into a project. It, it simplifies things so much when you get into a post-processing you know, platform, whether it's uh, DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro or Final Cut. When, when they're all labeled and you don't have to go in and manually identify it, it makes it really nice. Tip number two relates to both photo and video. And you know, some of you guys probably already know about this, but if you don't, I wanna show you how I set this up. And that's the information you see on your screen actively whenever you're taking a photo or video. If all of the information's on the screen, it just is cluttered and you kind of miss the importance of some of the stuff. However, when you do it like this, you can really make sure that you get a lot of valuable information from what's being displayed on the screen. Let me show you how to get this done. So what I'm talking about here is all the information you see on the screen. And if I click info, it will cycle through the different screens I have programmed. Like here is nothing so that it's frame only. Here is the, um, all the info without any frame. And then you have this one, which has my buttons, my main buttons for aperture. And, you know, in case I'm not looking through the, uh, the viewfinder, which I don't do a lot of on video, I have the buttons right there. And then this one has both the level and the histogram as, as well as the buttons. So let's go ahead and hit the menu button. And we're gonna slide over to red and screen seven. It says shooting info display. Now here's some options here, uh, but the one we're looking for is screen info settings. And so I have four of the five possible screens you can set. Screen one, if you hit the info button, this shows you the options. You can scroll down and you can add, like this one is your detailed shooting info. This brings up all the stuff on the left screen or left side of the screen, the right side of the screen. I don't really use that much, so I keep that off. I don't have that on any of my displays. You can add the histogram, you can add on-screen buttons. You can see 
the level. You can set these screens up so they show as little or as much information as you want. And so what I have is I have this one, the first screen having the buttons like I showed you a while ago. The second screen has that level and the histogram and the buttons. The third screen I have turned off because I don't need everything. Uh, the fourth screen is frame only, which I like if I'm trying to really concentrate on certain details of the, of the scene. And then I have on the fifth screen is all of the, the info without the frame. For me, when I'm shooting, what I do is I just scroll from one screen to the other. That way, if I need the histogram, I can scroll over and grab that. If I wanna see the frame more clearly, what's in the frame, I can scroll over and get that. It makes it very simple and very easy to take advantage of all the information that the screen will tell you. If you're just getting into the mirrorless or DSLR world, you'll find that you generally use the LCD screen to do a lot of shooting. The problem with that is, is it's not as good. It's not as sharp. It's not as revealing of what the final product's gonna look like, especially with photography, mostly with photography. I, I used to use the LCD screen a lot, and then I switched to using the viewfinder. The viewfinder, it displays all the information that you have on the LCD, but it allows you to, to really kind of get a feel for what the end product is gonna look like. Now, it just takes a little practice. It seems like it's gonna be hard, and it is when you first get started. But trust me when I tell you, it's something that you wanna practice and nail down because you're gonna get a lot better shots if you use the viewfinder on any camera, but definitely the Canon R5. So what I'm talking about is the viewfinder is, is this guy. And you know, some of you may not even realize it, but it's an electronic viewfinder. So the image is the digital image that your lens is picking up but it also shows you whatever's on the back screen. It's basically a reproduction of the back screen, but inside the viewfinder. The real advantage to this is photography. It's a lot easier to get great photos when you're using the viewfinder for most scenes, not all scenes. Now, there's some landscape shots that are just static where you can get great uh, pictures just from using the back screen. In anything that has detail or moving subjects, this viewfinder is the best way to go. Another trick with the viewfinder is that little dial right there, okay? That is your focus, and maybe you didn't realize that was there, but if you look in your viewfinder, you rotate that dial either down or up until the image inside the viewfinder is as sharp as you want it. And that's perfect for people that may have some vision issues. None of us have the same exact vision. So, you know, it, it's, it's good to be able to dial that in to get that detail nice and sharp. And it gets it really sharp. So make sure you use that dial to get a nice sharp image and make sure you're using your viewfinder on your photography. On the Canon R5 specifically, and, and maybe some of the other cameras as well, the, the switch between photo and video is it's it's a couple of steps and you know i'm not a big fan of that because a lot of times i want to switch like immediately i don't want to have to go in and hit two or three different settings to switch modes uh you know a lot of times i've found that when i'm doing that you know in a hurry i'll not get the right setting i'll not get into the right mode that i want to be in and it just it frustrates me so what i did is i went ahead and reprogrammed the mn button and that allows me with one touch of the button to switch between my photo mode and my video mode. Uh, absolutely love this switch and I think you will too. In case you're unsure, the button we're talking about is right there, that MFN button. And it's right where all the other main buttons are on the camera, so it's perfectly located. Otherwise, you have to hit menu and then scroll to whatever uh, you know, setting you want, and then hit this button and then get into your mode. With the MFN button programmed, it's one touch. So you go to menu, we are going to slide over to orange screen three, down to custom buttons. And here we can set the different buttons we want for video on this side and photo on this side. And so we'll go down to the MFN button. And so when you get down there, you can change it for both photo and video. I'd change the button for both photo and video so it does the same thing because that way you can get back and forth with the same button no matter which mode you're in. And you just go in and you get the, uh, the photo to video button there and click it, hit okay, and there you go. Now, just with the touch of that button, you're switching between modes. The Canon R5 was designed with several dials and so were the, the other cameras. 
and I, they don't come preset that so you can really take advantage of them and so with photo and video your your most commonly adjusted settings are going to be your iso your aperture and your shutter speed so after you reprogram these dials with a little bit of practice, this is gonna be an absolutely amazing feature that you're gonna thank me for later, especially if you're shooting through the viewfinder while taking a photo, because if you have these dials programmed just right, then you really, it, it becomes very easy to hold the camera up to your face, look through the viewfinder and get the settings changed that you need to, to get the perfect photo. Let me show you how to get this done. This one's huge to me, and it's right underneath of the one we just came out of. So we're going into orange three, and custom dials. I have them programmed for me like this because it's just, it's just simpler. But this is definitely gonna be a preference thing because you know it's, it's different to everyone, but at least with this, I have them all where I want. This dial here is set for shutter speed, while this dial is set for aperture. This dial is for the ISO. And then the underlooked dial for the RF system is this one. And this one I have set for my exposure compensation. And this works really well with both photo and video, but I really get the most out of it when I'm doing photo because those dials always do the same thing. They're always easy to get to while I'm looking in the viewfinder and it just helps me have a more efficient process. This one's mainly for you video guys out there. If you're doing a lot of video, you understand the importance of turning uh, autofocus on and off. And you know, sometimes you want focus to stay on a certain object. And the way that I can best describe it is like, if I'm doing a hiking video, sometimes I'll focus the, the camera on say a flower or a plant or a tree or something that's, that's really cool to look at. And I'll start the, the frame with just that in frame and focused. And what I wanna do is kind of walk by in the background blurred. And so, you know, quickly being able to turn that servo autofocus on and off, it's huge. And once I discovered how easy this could be, man, it was, it was a game changer because now it's just a touch of a button. And I know that that focus is gonna stay right where I want it to. I like to program my AF button to movie servo. That way I can turn it on and off as I want to very easily. And I can get that focus exactly where I want it. Let me show you how to do that. In our menu again, custom buttons. And now we're just gonna stay on the video side. And you can see right there, AF on is servo AF. And that way, you just go in here and select that. And that way I can easily just touch that button and turn uh, movie servo on or off. This one makes my life so much easier when I'm doing hiking videos. These tips and tricks mean the world to me and they make my life simpler. And they, the most important thing is they make sure that I, I capture that moment the way that I want it to be. You know, the, one of the worst feelings in the world is to be out, you know, capturing photos and videos and then get back to your office, put it on the computer and realize it didn't come out the way that you're expecting. The focus was off, the exposure was off, the, you know, whatever. And it, that's, you, if you've been in this game for a bit, you know what I'm talking about. It's so defeating and frustrating sometimes. These tips and tricks will help make sure that doesn't happen to you. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you got something out of the video. Tell us your tips and tricks for the Canon system. I've been Team Canon for most of my adult life and uh, it, a lot of it has to do with the menu system. Once you really get good at this menu system, you just, you, you don't even want to step out of it. It's, it's kind of like Apple, right? Like you, you get used to the platform and the apps and how things are done. And it, it just, there's no reason to switch. Like Canon's putting out such good stuff that, uh, you know, this menu system becomes the backbone of it. And it's, it's simple, it's easy and it just works. And, and with these tips and tricks, you can get the most out of it. I hope you guys have an awesome week and I can't wait to see you on the next video.